Violence, drugs, murder, smuggling, and, and intimidation are all interesting topics in nowadays news. All over America, crime is on the rise. We have come to the stage where America makes up 5% of the world's population and a quarter of the world's prisoners. Overcrowding creates a lack of space in public prisons, which leads public agencies to turn to private companies to house their prisoners. But private prisons are also very controversial. Supporters believe they help the economy and have better quality, while opponents claim private prisons produce more issues to the system. So, are private prisons wrongly accused? Since the colonial period, private partnership has existed in the U.S. prison system. Until early 1900s, the goals of both partners and states were the same, reduce death, branding, torture, or other physical punishments, and run the prisons as a profitable and self-supporting system for the state. However, by the beginning of World War II, public-private partnerships in prisons were virtually non-existent. Instead, a more complex form appeared in the late 1900s. This new form consisted of a private firm operating a secure adult facility for prisoners and soliciting contracts from the local, state, or federal governments. These private firms came to be known as private prisons. So let's take a look at some facts. The serious issue like riots, escapes, and inmate-on-inmate -inmate violence are always the primary problem in any prison and one of the most important criteria to measure a prison on. According to a Justice Department study released in 2012, the riot rate of public imp prison is 4 to 1, and nearly one of every 10 state prisoners is sexually victimized during confinement. Reports of public prison violence are much more easy to find than private prisons. The staff of Calipatria State Prison talked about his past experience from being violent from the prisoners. They began kicking me in the head, stomping me. Some of them I could see stomping me in a downward motion. Some of them were kicking me like a soccer ball in the head and upper torso ribs. At the time, I didn't realize I was being stabbed. Wilson and Herman also claim that private prisons want to make a profit, and it would be very self-destructive for them to not care about security, because if they did not, they obviously would not be allowed to operate for an extended period of time. Cost, as one of the original goals from colonial period to contemporary time, is an inevitable component in analyzing the strengths of prisons. According to a research report by the American Pri Prison System, private prisons illustrate a reduction in cost per inmate over time. And records maintained from the personnel county indicate the salary range for their private detention center in 2006 to be from about fourteen dollars to $20,000 a year, which is almost one-third lower than salary of public prison staff. However, Michelle Deach, the professor of LBJ School of Public Affairs in the University of Texas, where the private companies are blooming the fastest, argues the reason for such low costs of private prisons. So a lot of these facilities are understaffed, or they're staffed by um, uh, guards who receive much lower pay than they would in the public sector. Uh, in many cases, um, the going rate for guards in these private facilities is the rate of uh, what, what they're paying at the local McDonald's or Walmart. So, although the study showed a slight advantage to private prisons, we can't conclude that they really are beneficial for the development of the prison system. Analyzing the quality difference is more difficult since quality studies are less common than cost analysis studies. However, some researchers have still made efforts to develop a methodology with solid theoretical underpinnings for quality studies. In 1996, Logan compared the federal woman's prison in West Virginia with the private woman's prison in New Mexico. He examined eight dimensions of service, security, safety, order, care, activity, justices, conditions, and management, each of which had six or eight separate indicators. The data included staff and inmate surveys, as well as institutional records. He concluded that the private prisons overall had a higher level of service. Reason Public Policy Institute further claimed that privately built prisons are likely to use innovative new design techniques with sight lines and technology that allows inmates to be monitored with fewer correctional personnel. San Quentin, as shown in this video, is an older state prison that does not use the newer design techniques implemented by privately owned prisons. a bad time. We have our gunner up above us just in case for these moments. The goal of most prisons is to get their inmates back to their shelves. As seen here, privately owned prisons are obviously far superior in their methods. Both private and public prisons have a primary goal, 
of making their inmates better citizens after exiting the prison. The rehabilitation programs that these private and public prisons implement are intended to give them an option after they exit the prison other than crime. The methods in which they do this are similar and different at the exact same time. In 2007, Lon Lonza Caduce compared recidivism rates between private and public facilities. The study was conducted upon four recidivism traits, subsequent arrest, felony conviction, technical violations, and imprisonment for an offense. In this time, he conducted 12 months worth of data and matched the results upon the variables of the prisoner and the prison characteristics. The study discovered that private prisons actually had lower recidivism rates on all four factors. Another study that we found concurred with Lonza Caduce that showed that privately run prisons were marginally below that of public run prisons when it came to recidivism rates. Two years later, Lonza Caduce extended the examined time period to 48 months. In a surprising event, it showed that private run prisons even went lower when it came to their recidivism rates. This is of huge part when it comes to the determination of which prison is better. After comparing security, cost, quality, and rates of rehabilitation, private prisons appear to possess greater efficiency in improving the lives of inmates and boosting the economy. Thus, they have been wrongly accused. <laughs>